Hello, Game Day Coaching members. This is Rick Storley, new home sales coach. Today, we're going to be looking at the strategic sales and marketing plan. This will be specifically detailed towards home builders, but will also include all of the remodelers components. So the videos will begin be talking about the full plan, which is the home builders. The remodelers have a little bit less just because they don't have specific neighborhood locations and land inventory uh, that they typically uh, build in. There's nine parts to the plan. Today we're going to be talking about the first two parts, and then the subsequent videos will be talking about the balance uh, of the parts. So let's take a look at the parts of the plan. Uh, today we'll be discussing market facts and looking at your local economic analysis and neighborhood forecast. Uh, number two will be the pricing recommendations. Then we're going to move on to market positioning. Differentiation plan will come next. We'll take a look at plan review and, and, and looking at what you need to be offering as far as it relates to your target market's problems. Uh, lead generation and building value is next. And then we're going to be talking about lead conversions a previous sales review analysis and we will end up with an action plan which is simply the items that you come up with that need to be completed who will do them and when the deadline to complete them is all right so parts one and two today will be market facts number one is your local economic analysis what we're going to start with is local construction data and this will pertain to both home builders and remodelers we're trying to get an idea of what your market share is so what we want to do is we want to look at actual permit data and we are going to include data for the geographic areas that you build in and your price range only. So obviously for home builders, you have to figure out what your permit value is worth, less some of your uh, uh, costs such as uh, home sites and other things that you would exclude from there. Figure out exactly what the low to high is as far as a permit, uh, permit range, what the geographic area is, and then you want to find out what are the actual permits for either single family and or planned unit or multifamily year to date. So you're going to write those down here. If you're just building single family, don't worry about monthly family, or if you need both, do both. So the next question is, what percent of market share did you have? What was your sales divided by the total number of per permits for market share? And here's what I've found. It's nearly impossible to get much more than about 20, maybe 25% market share. I mean, you'd be absolutely dominating. And so what you want to look at is what is your percent of market share right now and make sure that you have opportunity to grow. Because if you do find yourself where you've already got about 20 to 25% market share, you need to shift and go into a different market or offer a different product within that, within that market in order to grow your company. Remodelers, same thing here. You're obviously going to be looking at permits for the type of jobs that you are focusing on. So if it's kitchens, bathrooms, that sort of thing, home improvement permits in the geographic areas you work. And just look at, okay, how many jobs did you have during that same time period? How many permits, in other words? And what's your market share? You're, gonna, you're, you're probably going to find that you are nowhere near the 25%, so there's lots of opportunity. All right, next is MLS, and this is for home builders only. We want to get our absorption numbers. We want to know what our absorption rate is for new and used homes. So we're going to go back into the MLS. We're going to look at sold and pending homes. Sold and pending homes in the geographic area or areas you build, the home type, single family or association maintained, and the price range, your breadth of offering, low to high. How many new homes sold and how many used homes sold? And then you go back and look at how many months of data did you get. So if you got 12 months, you that's great. If you got 10 months, that's great. Just to make a notation of it. Then what we're going to do is figure our absorption rates. So we'll take the number of sold and pending homes that you come up with divided by the number of months will tell us how many homes are absorbing each month. And we'll do the same thing for used homes. Now we want to figure out inventory rates for both new and used. So new homes will go right here and used homes will go right here. What is How many homes are currently listed for sale that are new you're competing with? How many used homes are currently listed for sale and used you're competing with? And remember, you're going to stick with the same MLS criteria, the same geographic area, home type, and price range for all these. All right, now we're going to look at summarizing your findings. Based on what you found, based on your local market knowledge, in other words, you expect absorption rates are expected to increase or decrease, and inventory levels are expected to decrease or increase. In other words, is there gas in the tank, in your opinion, to get more uh, market share out of where, where you're currently looking? And if there isn't, that means you need to look at different markets. Then the last thing we will do uh, right now is looking at neighborhood forecasts. Neighborhood forecasts. Uh, for your particular neighborhood, how many projected sales are there and what percent of market share would that be? We'll come back next time with pricing recommendations. Happy selling.